Hello, Sisfrey here again. Now, I don't know if you're anything like me, but sometimes when I was playing Minecraft, you're in the eternal search for diamond. Diamond armor, diamond pickaxe, diamond everything you can lay your hands on pretty much. And especially diamonds. But you're out mining and, well, you come across some more diamonds. So there's only one thing you could possibly do, isn't there? Mine a diamond. But it looks like you've been a little greedy and you're carrying far too many diamonds. Hmm. And you're quite clearly very far underground. So what do we do in this situation? Well, I suppose we could haul it all back to base. I mean, that's, uh, that's a couple of thousand blocks away, really. Or we could deploy our automatic item collector. So if we just got ourselves a nice little hole, just here. There we go. Take out our book and quill. Now, this particular activation trick I spotted simply Sark doing earlier. So, we open our book, type in deploy, and done. And you can see we've activated the system. So, just hop in the hole against the negative Z side. There we go. And just wait and jump. And there we go. And the item collector has arrived. Now it is actually there, um, there's a bit of a visual glitch that you can't actually see what's there and you also can't interact with it, but if you log in again um, it'll reappear and I'll show you that in a second. But now if you see, if I just throw my items on the ground, they're all being teleported away. And that will work for all the items. So let me just uh, re-log so you can see what's here. There we go. So we have a command block minecart just sitting right there. And it's teleporting, and there's a new um, command, well, targeter, in the 1.8 snapshots, which is an entity. And it's just picking up all the types of items, radius of 20, and sending them to those coordinates right there. And as it's sitting on the activator rail and redstone block, it will just keep picking up items until we destroy it. So let's just get rid of all the rest of items and head over to spawn. And all gone. And there we go. And now we can just leave that and wander off. Just ignore that. That's a, another one of the lovely visual glitches. And then we can just mine more diamond. And then finally head back to the spawn at some point when we're ready. I will quickly mention once you finish using the system, do remove deploy from the book. Uh, sometimes when you log out and in again, it will reactivate the system and then just plunk it wherever you are. Right, so off to spawn and let's see how this thing works. Right, here we are at the spawn, so we're actually in the spawn chunk so the items can be processed. And this is our little storage system right here. So the teleported items get dropped off just there. Now I would recommend having several more hoppers in line because as you can see, there's a pile in the corner and about half the inventory there. So do put several more, so that way you don't lose any items, obviously, because they just spawn after five minutes. But it's just demonstration, so we can ignore that. So the system's just down here. So if we come down, and I will just turn this clock off. Right. So first off, this is using a new variation on the clear command. So it's clearing the closest player of 386, which is the book and quill. But it's clearing zero of them, so it will detect that the item exists, but it won't remove it from your inventory. And it will still activate the output right there. It's also looking for books that have pages that say deploy in them. So if it doesn't say deploy, it won't activate, but if you type deploy and save it, it will. So that's what that one does. So if that activates, true to here, and then these are just various bits telling you the system's activated and how where you have to stand because of the way it works and it just mentions against the north side because the way that command block minecarts are currently teleported they tend to if you're on the south side get stuck into the block next to you not a huge concern you can just destroy the block and give it a shove but it's there just to give you a warning after that countdown just to give you enough time obviously if you're using the system regular you won't really need much of a countdown and then it's just usual, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
and then on to here. So the first part of this trick is we summon a falling sand entity, three blocks above, and one five two, which is a redstone block. That's why there's a block sitting on top of here, on the off chance that somehow it doesn't get teleported and lands on there. Probably not necessary, but that's just a safety thing. And in that redstone block, whilst well, it's still falling sand, gets targeted as an entity and teleported to the player. And that teleports to exactly where you're standing. Now it goes on to tell you to jump. The reason for this is currently you can only teleport um, entities to the player. You can't teleport relative to the player. That would be incredibly useful if you could. And if you do teleport falling sand and then try to quickly move it afterwards, like move it up or whatever, it doesn't tend to work too well and tends to break instead. So that's why I've got you jumping. Another quick countdown is that you're one block higher. Uh, once you're one block higher, these ones over here activate. So this is another falling sand, spawning above here yet again. 157, which is an activator rail. And then this one is just summoning a minecart command block. Same position, just a custom name for the hell of it. And then that's the command that you saw a little bit earlier for teleporting all nearby items. Same trick as before. This one teleports it to the player of the minecart command block. And this one teleports to falling sand to the player. And then just a couple of quick messages letting you know that it's online, that you should leave the hole, drop your items, and destroy the collector when you're finished. And this will work absolutely anywhere in the world without fail every single time, as long as you follow the instructions anyway. So if I wanted to, I could go over to here to this conveniently placed hole, climb in, get myself out of the negative side side, and out with the book, and deploy. There we go, systems online. Redstone block, jump up one, and there we go. This time it's actually appeared. And if I just start throwing my items down, off they go. Now, I'm bound to have some people watching this thinking, well, why didn't you just send it as one stacked entity? So the block and then the rail and the cart. So the cart rides the rail, the rail rides the block, and have them all as falling sand. Well, I initially did try that, but the way that the teleportation code works for the entities it actually would rip the stack apart. So it would teleport that, and it would teleport that, and it would put both of them in the same spot, and try to put both in the same spot, one or the other would break randomly, and then this would turn up and it'd be no rail or no redstone ore block to power it. Redstone block, not redstone ore block, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, so that's why it wasn't done as a stacked entity. I spent much time trying to make it work as a stacked entity, but it just didn't want to. If you can make it work as a stacked entity, or if it's something they change in the future parties, excellent. But at the moment, they have to go separately. So I hope you found that useful, and as per usual, thanks for watching, and bye-bye. So clearly, this fence makes them feel pretty safe against zombies. But the question got to ask is, what will they do against zombies who happen to have advanced technology such as this and are fully capable of going out during the day. How dangerous do you ask?